When I was five and a half, I used to wrestle with my father in the living room. And our matches always followed the same script. At a certain point, he would pin me on my back with my hands by my shoulders. And I would lift up my head and go, rawr! And he would fall back, frozen with terror. <laughs> and I would leap up, pin him, and win. And you didn't have to be a genius to see what was going on. I had developed a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept it a secret. I didn't go around bragging. I didn't stage tacky demonstrations on the schoolyard. I took it very seriously. I mean, wrestling with my dad was fun, but that was my training. And there was this excitement growing inside of me. You know, I could go through the rest of my life being rar man. That would be fine. That would be an honor. But I sensed that I was entering a chrysalis phase, and that any minute a, a sublime, more potent, lifelong superpower would lock in, and my origin story would resolve, and Rar Man would give way to sublime, more potent man. <laughs> so one day, I was loitering in front of Molly Salyard's house. Molly was six. She was the older woman I was obsessed with. <laughs> I didn't know what it was that I wanted from her. I guess, you know, attention or affirmation. She was sitting in her front yard, and she saw me, but she wouldn't acknowledge me. And I knew that some kind of, of nuanced, endearing overture was needed. And I picked up a pine cone and threw it at her, <laughs> which was pretty sophisticated for five and a half. And uh, she howled, and her 14-year-old brother burst out the front door. And I took off. I got, I got halfway down the block. He caught up. He knocked me down and pinned me on my back with my hands by my shoulders. <laughs> and I thought, oh, you fool. <laughs> Could you have made this any easier? <laughs> and I, I chose the moment just right and lifted up my head and went, rawr! And he looked down at me and went, rawr! <laughs> and it's a shame that at five and a half, I didn't know any curse words. Because a, a good meaty, oh, fuck, would have really been cathartic right then. <laughs> As it was, my, my head was ready to pop with panic and, and just so many questions. Like, had I voided my superpower by, by chucking that pine cone? Or, or was this maybe part of my training and my father was hiding behind a tree taking notes? Or had my father betrayed me and spilled my deepest secret to some larger, more compelling boy? Or were there no superpowers? And life was harsh and unremarkable. And if you were a fat five and a half year old, then that's what you brought to the party. <laughs> Good luck, because it only got darker in middle school. Or was this my origin moment? And that the danger and the suspense and the adrenaline were all going to combine. I mean, this was a cliffhanger. If you were reading the Rar Man comic, you'd have to buy the next issue to see how I got out of this. And then you would see my lifelong superpower locked in. Rar Man was gone. This was the story of... This was the story of... Oh, fuck, man! I was cooked. He uh, marched me back to his house and made me apologize to his sister, and, and I did. I, I looked her right in the eye, and I told Molly I was sorry. And I, I had one thing going for me, which was that I, I forgot to cry. I mean, which was the five-and-a-half-year-old response to crisis, but this was my Matrix moment. When the universe peeled itself back, and I saw, okay, it wasn't what I thought it was, and tears and blubbering just seemed beside the point. And I think Molly found it stoic and, and a little bit touching. Her brother found it hilarious. He roared me all the way home, <laughs> cementing his reputation as an arch villain or, you know, just a dickhead. <laughs> and so a week later, I was wrestling with my father, and uh, he pinned me on my back with my hands by my shoulders, and, and I didn't roar. 
I looked him in the eye and I said I was sorry. My lifelong superpower had kicked in. The one that would see me through the rest of my life. Barman was gone. This was the story of Apology Man.